If you're a fan of the kind of videos I make, you might have seen some videos about the clan gen challenge, where people play the clan gen game and then draw all of the cats and talk about their personalities and things that have happened. Uh, this video is in that format, um, the only difference is I'm using my own characters from Amazon because I've been meaning to make a video where I kind of just draw all of the characters from the main group and note down their personalities and their relationships to give people a better feel of kind of the world building and that kind of thing while I work on other Amazon related stuff. So um, I say it every video but sorry for not uploading in a while. Other than that, I'm just going to get into the video because it's already about 20 minutes long, so hopefully you enjoy. Hound is in the same generation as a good handful of cats in the colony, however due to the circumstances of her trainee days, she isn't close with any of them, and as far as anyone could tell, she has no desire to be. She was born a single kit, much larger than any seen before, and due to this, her mother cardinal lost a lot of blood while kitting, and suffered a very weak heart throughout the time she was alive during Hound's kithood. Eventually, one of the regular bouts of infighting started in Thistle Colony, and the stress of it all was too much for Cardinal, resulting in a sudden heart attack. Helm was soon chosen by Sedge himself to train, due to her vulnerability and how easy she was to manipulate, and he shaped her into the cat she is today. Hound herself trained Rust, who is the current delegate, and while she has no true fondness for the younger cat, they have more of a bond than you'll usually find Hound having with other cats, but I'll get into that more with Rust. Hound was trained by the previous commander and Cal's father, Sedge, and was raised purely to take over from him, hence why she had no chance to form relationships in her younger days, and has given up on trying to redeem herself among her peers. She has all the power, and in higher eyes that's more valuable than any of the friendships that she could possibly form with them. Cal is Hound's subordinate, and the son of Sedge and the current senior, Sheep. He is incredibly close with his mother, and when she retired he continued to visit her daily and share his day with her. He is closest otherwise with his mate Snow, who I'll get into next, and their son Fever. Outside of these cats, Cal's friendship group consists of his old mentor Dust, her child Milk, and their mate Tansy. Out of them all, Cal is most comfortable around Milk, as the mute cat offers a calm environment for the anxious Tom, but he has a strong bond with Dust from his days as a trainee. Tansy stays out of the group's drama and is mainly there to hang around Milk, but there's a base level of friendship with her as well. Snow is the healer of Thistle Colony, however they originally trained as a combatant until their accident. When out hunting with their at the time childhood friend Hound, the two cats split up and Snow ended up trapped in a two leg hunting trap, which took one of their hind legs. They were bound to the healer's den for longer than they needed, as Sedge thought they would only embarrass the colony once they returned to combatant duties, and Snow eventually found themselves under the healer Lycan's wing, continuing the craft. Snow trains their son Fever and his mates with Cow, who has been secretly taking them out to train in fighting and hunting since their accident, which is how they met and eventually grew into mates. Snow is the smarter and more practical half of the couple, where Cow is often too anxious to act on plans. Snow is more likely to put things into action and take initiative. Fever was found on Thistle Colony territory at the end of the harsh cold season that took a multitude of lives across every colony. His mother was desperate for herbs to treat her and her sick kit. Her mate had died and Creek Colony had none of the needed herbs, so she took it upon herself to take Fever across the stepping stones. Tragically, she fell through the ice and only the tiny kit was saved as she managed to fling him onto the grass as she sunk beneath the freezing water. Cow and Snow found him and took him in as their own, and eventually he began to train as a healer under Snow. He's unmatched among the trainees when it comes to energy, closely followed by his friend Ant, who he often causes trouble with. Though he doesn't know much about his origin, recently he's found himself with a growing interest in Creek Colony, though he doesn't know why. All he knows is that he's eager for them to get new healers after the previous ones mysteriously disappeared. As mentioned before, Rust trained under Hound, and has a great respect for her. While she isn't stupid, the relatively young cat doesn't fully understand what horrible thing every other cat seems to see in the commander. Rust only recently became delegate, meaning that she's in charge of mediating arguments between cats and gathering counsel to tackle legal problems. She took over from Dust, and the only thought she has on the situation is that it's funny she replaced a cat with such a similar name to her own. Other than her duties, Ross is often preoccupied with keeping an eye on her brother Rai, who seems to have stopped bringing home kits he mysteriously discovered in the forest. Everybody knows he used the free time during the winter, when hunting patrols were pointless and no battles were planned to sneak off and caught a variety of cats from other colonies. 
While she shakes her head at her brother's antics, Russ loves her nieces and nephew and wonders if she'll ever get to train one to follow her poor steps as delicate. Now I'll start talking about the Thorn Den combatants. While Russ thinks the most interesting part of their situation is that they share similar names, Dust understands the full story of their role swap. She was appointed as delegate by the previous commander Sedge, and he even appointed her to train his son Carol. However, this backfired as Dust taught Carol to be a just and polite young cat, which enraged Sedge, who wanted a son to follow his poor steps and be seen as a fierce rival to cats outside the colony. As frustrated as he was with Dust, it's almost impossible for a commander to demote a delegate unless they do something actually punishable. Luckily for Hound, during the cold season, Dust was caught giving prey to her starving family in Creek Colony, and Hound saw this as the perfect opportunity to set her own trainee up as the new delegate, knowing that Russ would be easy to manipulate into mediating situations in Hound's favour. Dust is obviously frustrated at the situation, but currently her delegate skills are put to use in her social group, most often with advising Cal on how to handle his job as subordinate. Dust has two kits with her mate Thor, who raised their two kits while Dust was busy being a delegate. Their kits, Acorn and Milk, have grown up to be strong combatants, who I will talk more about later. Tansy, the mate of Dust's child Milk, is a pretty standard Thorn Den combatant, which is a position reserved for the greatest fighters among the colony. She likes to fight, train, and sunbathe, and as far as politics goes, she'd rather let others do the talking. And once they decide that it ends in a battle, then she's happy to jump in. Tansy likes Cal, but as far as all of his anxieties about his duties, she thinks he needs to relax and enjoy life as the sun finally returns and melts away any evidence of the season they have just endured. Tansy's trainee is Spider. The young cat is very quiet and anxious, and is helping Tansy gain a little more patience for those around her, especially Cal. Milk has found themselves with a recent promotion to the Thorn Den. Dust, Milk and their mate Tansy are all in this position, while their father Thor and brother Acorn are happy to be Moss Den competents and focus on hunting and border patrols, more than waiting around to be assigned to the next war Hound decides to start. Milk is albino and is a selective mute, meaning they don't often speak. They are hard of hearing, so their friends will often find her peering, especially close into conversations to make sure he gets all of the important information. Milk considers Cal to be their best friend in the group, and loves seeking him out to go on small patrols and let him finally relax. Cal appreciates this immensely and values their silent strolls. They both hope to go for more of them now that the weather has warmed up. While she doesn't have a trainee yet, Milk is happy just helping out with the training of other cats, offering a unique approach in sessions. Rye is Russ's brother, and as previously mentioned, he has three kits, now trainee age, that he brought back to camp during the cold season. Amazingly, all three cats survived, these being Ant and Spider, mothered by a grotto colony cat named Thistle, and Webb, mothered by a creek colony cat named Blue. After the shock of twins, he finally stopped seeking out cats he could never really have, and settled in his own colony. This being said, he has met eyes with an unfamiliar Tom a few times while out patrolling, possibly a rogue, and no cat would be surprised if he started yet another fling in the moons to come. Although he wasn't the most reliable mate to their mothers, Rai's a fantastic father and all his kids think he's the greatest. Webb, the youngest, especially looked up to him and was ecstatic when Rai was given him to train. Hound hoped he'd giving him a trainee would tie him down to staying in camp. Apple is the final of our Thorn Den members. Much like Tansy, he's all brawn, no brains. He loves a fight and doesn't really value a lot else for most of his life. He's less of a himbo and more of a jock, so you can imagine Cat's surprise when he turned out to be a dedicated mate and father to Harvest and their kits. He's determined for his three kits to be the strongest fighters in the colony and impatiently awaits the day where his lineage crowds the Thorn Den. He has one brother, Chestnut, and loves nothing more than to tease the quick-tempered Tom. He isn't sure how Chestnut actually feels about him, but is pretty sure they're close. If nothing else, Apple loves his brother. As far as politics go, much like Tansy, he isn't too focused on who's doing what, as long as he gets to throw himself into a battle at the end of the day. He's already convinced that he's the best Thistle Colony has to offer, so all he's showing off in battle is really just for the thrill of it rather than to gain any admirers. After all, he assumes everybody already admires him and wishes they either were him or were with him. Now moving on to Moss Den competence, which are cats who are especially skilled at other things than fighting, such as hunting, tracking or training. This is another promotion of up from basic competence. The first of these cats is Thor, the mate of Dust and father of Milk and Acorn. Much like Mint, who I'll speak more on later, Thor used to be one of the Toms in the nursery. Though different to Mint, he was only there to care for his own kits. As his mate was the delegate at the time of their kit's birth, Thor took it upon himself to raise the kits so that Dust's duties weren't interrupted. 
While Dust is a good mother, the kids have a much closer bond with their father, him and Milk having a particularly close bond. Thor was the cat to develop the sign language that Thistle Connolly often uses for Milk, both because she's hard of hearing and also for the frequent days where they don't feel like talking. The next two cats are very close siblings, Auburn taking things a lot more seriously, where Rain acts much like a young cat still. They're in the generation just above Thor, Dust, Shrew and Morning, and while their brother has little trouble making friends with the slightest, the younger cats, Auburn is widely seen as a strange cat as they usually sit alone and talk to themselves, both from a place of anxiety and also just as a habit. They prefer their alone time, and even other more anxious cats unnerve them. Auburn isn't good with kids, so when their younger brother's mate died and Auburn and Rain helped him through the grief, Auburn was usually only seen when the kids were asleep or out playing in the clearing. Thor, Shrew and Morning were barely still trainees while Rain and Auburn were, but they still admired the older cats and are glad to be friends with them in current times. Thor is more standoffish, but is much like Auburn, so the two are often found on the trolls together enjoying the silent, if a bit awkward company. Morning is much closer with Rain and is a big fan of Auburn too, and has been trying to get Shrew to join in on friendly conversations more, but he's not a fan. It's been a big step for Auburn to even talk to any of them on patrols, so hopefully Shrew can follow in their poor steps. Rain is definitely the cool uncle to both Grouse and Hayes, and can't wait for their fast approaching trainee ceremony. He knows you aren't technically meant to mentor kin, but seeing as Rai got his son as a trainee, Rain hopes for one of his brother's kits as a trainee. As mentioned before, Rain is very immature, and this is likely why he gets on so well with the young cats. As such a large cat, he's no stranger to getting his pelt scratched up by thorns or getting frostbite from snow sticking to and melting on his pelt. He doesn't mind this one bit however, and some cats speculate that he does this on purpose just to spend time with snow and fever, as he has a particular liking for both these cats. Snow bounces off his personality well, and Fever is the perfect example of an excitable trainee, so Rain loves nothing more than to ask questions about the paintings on the den walls, or encourage Fever to prank his mentor. Chestnut is the grumpiest of his generation, other than when he's with just his mate Sweet, but the entire group refuse to let him sit out when they go out and cause trouble or gather gifts for the kids. Although everyone trained with Hound, they barely saw her away from Sedge, and she never let anybody's efforts to prevent her go anywhere. With the way she's been leading, none of them want anything to do with her anyway. Chestnut couldn't care less, seeing Hound as one less cat he has to bother being nice to. He's the brother of Apple, who he feels teases him solely for his size. Chestnut is beyond insecure about being a munching cat, and has a severe case of small man syndrome, as his temper more than makes up for his size. His trainee is Ant, who is the complete opposite of him in terms of personality. Their dynamic is mostly Ant annoying Chestnut to no end, and when he snaps at her, she irritates him even more by almost always perfecting the move he thought she wasn't paying attention to learning. Acorn is Milk's brother and is another solitary cat. He's happy on his own and goes with the flow, all of this alone time likely being why he was good enough at hunting to be promoted to the Moss Den. Everybody flocks to the Fresh Kill Par room when the returning patrol has Acorn on it, as he's widely known even among other colonies for the cat with the most skill at catching juicy prey. Other than his family relations that I've already talked about, Acorn is a standard cat, though he can sometimes be seen taking the best of his catches to Mint and the kits in the nursery. All of the specialised combatants have been covered, so it's now time for the baseline fighters and hunters who don't particularly specialise in anything. As mentioned before, Shrew is rather standoffish. He follows along with what his group decides is the most fun at any moment, reflective of how he used to mindlessly swoon after his now mate mourning and follow her every word when they were younger. Shrew's most notable moment was during a patrol which he wasn't actually a part of before they were all in an established friend group. Thor, Harvest and Morning were out on a celebratory patrol, congratulating Harvest on finally graduating from being a trainee, when a fox ambushed them. Shrew was on a walk by himself when he overheard the commotion, and to everyone's surprise, launched himself into the fight, scaring off the fox with his sheer ferocity. Morning was the most wounded, and Shrew sat with her in the healer's den, only leaving to fetch her prey until she recovered with one less eye than before. They became mates soon after, and although he's still reserved, his friends best know Shrew for his courage and selflessness when it comes to those he's closest to. Morning is a descendant of the subordinate Tawny, who was alive during the time of the commander before Sedge, his father Bear. She's missing an eye from the same fox attack Shrew saved her from. Before the attack, she was the cat of her generation most determined to befriend Hound. Obviously, this was doomed to fail, and all it meant was that Hound especially disliked, and continues to dislike, Morning, even more than the rest of the cats she commands. Morning has always had a fighting spirit, and if a fox didn't end up taking her down, you can imagine that Hound's cold demeanour didn't either. 
She continues to pipe up in the colony meetings and offers points when discussing battle strategy and the like, and is often on Rust's council when delegating needs to take place. Since the fox attack, however, she became mates with Shrew, and they have since had two kits together, those being Tumble and Fidget, the designated troublemakers of the colony aside from the trainees and kits. Morning is closer with Rain than his sibling, though she is a big fan of Auburn too, and has been trying to get Shrew to join in on friendly conversation with the two of them more, but he's not a fan. Sweet is Chestnut's mate and part of his friend group alongside Harvest and Apple. Whereas every other cat is either old or younger than him, Sweet is exactly the same age as Cow. They train together and share the trainee den with just the two of them. Sweet is related to Snow, though nobody quite remembers how. They're something like cousins, but everyone is certain that they're resemblance at the very least. Cow used this to his advantage as a young trainee, crushing on the older cat Snow, getting bits of information and gossiping with Sweet. Snow at the time was best friends with Hound before their accident, and Cal knew that the huge she-cat disliked him, even if he wasn't sure why, so asking somebody other than Snow about themselves was the most realistic way of finding more about them. Fidget was born with four ears, which they take great pride in and love using to freak out the kits and cats from other colonies who aren't aware of the mutation. They often tease their sibling Tumble that he may as well have four ears with how big his two are, which is one of the many regular jokes the two bounce between at the other's expense. The siblings are both only just graduated from being trainees and love to shove it in the younger cats' faces, other than Fever, who they can't tease as much and who usually joins in with their games more than he falls victim to them. Tumble and Fidget may as well be twins, they look almost identical and act like the same cat. While they aren't similar enough in looks to trick cats into mistaking them for one another, it doesn't stop the two of them from causing colony-wide havoc on a daily basis. If you made any cat choose, they tell you Tumble is the calmer of the two, even if only by a tiny margin. They take after Shrew slightly more, whereas Fidget takes after Morning slightly more. The next three cats are the kits of Rye, Ant and Spider being full siblings and Webb being their half-brother. Ant is yet another energetic young cat. She loves nothing more than showing up her mentor in training when she displays the moves she was pretending not to listen to the instructions for. Her siblings are her world, and aside from them, she loves annoying Fiba and sometimes Snow on herb gathering patrols. She became closer to Fiba as she's always getting scrapes and thorns stuck in her paws, landing her in his den more often than her siblings. As mentioned before, her mentor is Chestnut, and she wouldn't wish for a different mentor as she finds their opposite personalities play nicely off of each other. Spider is Ant's litter mate and the trainee of Tansy. She's very shy, barely heard above a squeak in the rare moment she does have something to say. She's very fragile and gets startled by any little sounds in the forest, or often getting scared off by prey before she or anyone else on the patrol gets a chance to catch her. She has a horrible fear of bugs, which her siblings tease her endlessly for, considering her and her sister's names. Webb's the final of the siblings, and his mother is a cat from Creek Colony. Fittingly, he loves to swim and loves even more to run into the trainee den after a training session with his dad and shake his fur out over the other cats. He thinks his dad is the coolest and follows him in everything he does, convinced he is the ultimate cat. The other two trainees are also siblings and the kids of Mint and the late Plum. The twins are about to become trainees and Grouse couldn't be more excited. He's the typical ambitious trainee to be. Convinced he'll get the best mentor and impress everyone so much that they'll immediately promote him to commander and rename the colony after him. His sister Hayes is also eager to be made a trainee, but is very observant for her age and has noticed the growing hostility between her peers now that the outside threat of the cold season is done. She hopes her mentor isn't too involved in any of the drama once she's assigned them and that her and her brother can keep their heads down and graduate without any trouble. The first cat in the nursery is Mint, the father of Grouse and Hayes. His mate Plum was killed in one of the battles Hound forced the colony into with Creek Colony, very soon after she had had kits, and Mint had been in the nursery with them ever since. He intends on staying as a permanent extra set of paws in the nursery. Neither of his siblings, Auburn and Rain, have an issue with him, despite him being mothered by a different cat, as none of the three are really close with their father, and even if they were, they aren't the type of cats to hold that sort of grudge. They were both there for Mint when his mate died, and they admire the help he gives in the nursery, so he's very close with both his half-siblings. He's eager to see his kids become trainees, but hopes they stay safe and get assigned responsible mentors. The other cat in the nursery is Harvest, the daughter of Golder and Anne Rook. Harvest, Apple, Chestnut and Sweet are all very close. Everyone's excited that Harvest finally managed to have kids despite her age, as everyone was convinced it would never happen. They're also surprised Apple is such a loyal mate, but any teasing they give him about it isn't good fun. Her three kits are Fire, Tar and Bright, and they are all very strong considering the harsh cold season they had to survive through immediately after entering the world. The first senior cat in the colony is Sheep, the mother of Cow. She retired soon after the death of Cow's father Sedge. Sheep doesn't have many friends among the seniors, her closest friends in the past being Hound's mother Cardinal before her death, and her childhood friend Maze, who was killed in a freak accident as reported by Sedge. 
Sheep and Drift trained together, though they were never really close as Drift thought badly of Sheep from how close she was to Sedge. Golden and Rook think Drift is unnecessarily grumpy and hostile, but they think Sheep is lovely. She loves her son Cow as well as his new family and her grandson Fever is one of her favourite cats to spend time with, often going for walks with him before the cold season hit. As mentioned before, Drift is another senior of Thistle Colony and the father of Auburn, Rain and Mint, though he had multiple mates throughout his life. He is hostile to most, even his own family, and sticks to himself in the den, which he rarely leaves. His older son's mother, Hay, was a barn cat that he ended a relationship with on bad terms, which is the same as Mint's mother, Jewel, a kitty pet. Since these sour breakups, he's stuck to avoiding outside camp ventures. Rook and Golden are mates and the parents of Harvest. They're very proud of their daughter and happy to see her mate Apple become such a high-ranking competent, and they're obsessed with their grandkids. Golden's sister was Hornet, the subordinate under Sedge before Hound, and since her seemingly mysterious death, she has always had a great distaste for the commander. That's all of Thistle Colony. I'm sorry if any of the recording has stutters or I misspeak. I really did not have the time to record each individual bit for 20 minutes you know, individually, so hopefully it's understandable. I'll try and um, hand write captions for this video just in case, because I know I speak mumbly or quickly and kind of jumble words up a lot. But yeah, uh, let me know what other Amazon related videos you'd like to see, because that's kind of what I want to focus on. Um, but I'm not sure when I'll next upload. Obviously, I'll try and make it as quickly as possible. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.